The weight of the past is staggering. Too many traditions, too many emperors, too many treasures, and too many wars. Here on the banks of the old Qin Huai exists an overwhelming abundance of beauty and of heartbreak. Dare to uncover this treasure chest of history and its alluring yet burdening past will evoke a whirlwind of emotions and leave an indelible mark on your soul. Prepare now to be forever changed as I utter the words, Welcome to Nanjing. Hi, I'm Noah. Join me as I embark on thrilling adventures discovering China's hidden gems and completing random travel challenges along the way. Every time I step foot in Nanjing, capital of six dynasties, once known as the seat of kings, an indescribable aroma fills the air, a scent carrying with it the residue of countless tales of the past, a fragrance that transports you through time. Let our adventure now begin as it's challenge time. Nanjing is a city famed for many things, including literature. Cement yourself in Nanjing's literary legacy by chronicling your and your viewers' insights on Nanjing. So I have this gorgeous Chinese style journal here and with it I'm going to document my innermost deepest experiences, dreams, and insights on the city of Nanjing. And I encourage you to do the same. So keep watching this video, share your insights on Nanjing, share your thoughts on this video, and just like that, your words could be etched in the lore of Nanjing forever. And so we're off to explore Nanjing. But in a capital city of six dynasties, overwhelmed with history and culture in every corner, where do we possibly start? Well, how about the front door? Roommates, feast your eyes on the gate of China, the grand entrance to the city of Nanjing and to the Nanjing city wall. One of the best preserved city walls in China and 350 million bricks of glory. But more than that, the Nanjing City Wall is one of the greatest Nanjing history and geography teachers you'll ever encounter. Firstly, the layout of this fortress demonstrates the magnificent topography of the area, weaving up and down Nanjing's gorgeous hills, lakes, and rivers. But Nanjing, above all, is a museum of the past, and it's up here on these walls where you can really take in the essence of this city. It's a reminder of the good times, like this view right here of Chunwu Lake, a lush green space with 1,500 years of history. Whether you're taking a leisurely boat ride, getting in your daily morning exercise, or taking a romantic walk with a lover, Xuanwu Lake Park's got something for everyone. However, if the history of Nanjing were a song, it's definitely got some melodies of pain and despair in there as well. This wall is both a witness and a victim of the many invasions, burning, and destruction that Nanjing has faced throughout the years. But the truly astounding part is that if you look closely enough, you'll find inscriptions all along the wall recounting memories of Nanjing's past, reciting eloquent verses of poetry, and honoring the great namesakes that once stepped foot on this wall. And now, let me decipher it into the journal. Honestly, I've got no clue what that thing says, but there is one famous Nanjing quote that I've memorized by heart, and that is, This place is a residence for emperors, and in its mountains, dragons and tigers crouch. That's a quote from the famous Chinese poet Li Bai, referring to Nanjing, and in particular, these grounds I stand on. Purple Mountain, the most renowned mountain in the city. It's long been said that Purple Mountain protects Nanjing with all the strength of dragons and tigers. By residence of emperors, Li Bai was referring to the fact that this place serves as the final resting place for several great sovereigns and figures throughout Chinese history, including Sun Yat-sen, the father of modern China, and a pivotal figure in helping to overthrow the Qing Dynasty, establish the Republic of China, and in the process, unify and modernize the country. 
Purple Mountain's stunning natural scenery, deep impression as a profound symbol of culture and burial place of dynastic rulers, known as the Sons of Heaven in China, means that this place is more than a tour stop for an avid history fan. For Purple Mountain stands as a symbol of imperial authority and a spiritual gateway between this world and those beyond. After an otherworldly hike, let's ground ourselves back down to Earth again with a visit to one of Nanjing's most renowned temples. The Confucius Temple, a peaceful sanctuary where followers of Confucius can pay tribute to their great philosopher. That is, until you enter the Gates of Hell. That's the nickname for the Jiangnan Tribute Hall, AKA the Imperial Examination Hall. And here, the stakes are high. Imagine traveling the long road from your small hometown all the way to the big capital with the dream of being somebody. You spend the next nine days in a mass cluster of intimate cells together with your test mates overcoming hurdles on the path to either legendary success or legendary failure. Passing the exam was a true challenge, but if you were able to do it, it could transform your life, providing you with the opportunity to rise up the ranks in the government. And on the larger scheme of things, it also held significance for China's stability as a long-term empire. By selecting officials based on their intellect and capabilities, the system aimed to ensure that those in charge of the country's day-to-day -day affairs were highly qualified. It's here in the Confucius Temple where we gain a glimpse into a bygone era where challenges, aspirations, and the pursuit of knowledge intertwine, leaving an indelible mark on the seat of kings. As night falls, there's only one place to be in Nanjing, strolling along the banks of the Qinhuai River. The Qinhuai means everything to this city. For centuries, it's been the beating heart of Nanjing's economy, crucial in driving the city's prosperity. For an even deeper dive on Nanjing and the Qinhuai, I recommend reading The People of Nanjing by Ye Zhao Yan. Through his evocative words, Zhao Yan beautifully captures the essence of the Qinhuai. I have a quote I'm gonna read here. When the moonlight hit the Qinhuai River, the barges would float along with the sound of pipes and singing somber and soft in a breathtaking scene. Wearing soft silks, their hair pinned up with jasmine flowers, the young women who resided on either side of the river would roll up their hanging screens and lean on their parapets, listening quietly. So when the drums sounded upon the lantern boats, the scrolls would be rolled up on either side of the river. The thick aroma of burning ambergris would fill up the air and rays of moonlight would drift upon the water. Looking upon such a sight, one would be put in the minds of the beautiful paradise of the Taoist immortals. Those words once stirred the hearts of many an outsider who came to stroll Nanjing streets and take in its wonders, walking along the banks of the Qinhuai River. If you think that's beautiful, you're in for a treat. It just so happens we're visiting Nanjing around the Chinese New Year, which gives us the amazing chance to visit the Qinhuai Lantern Festival. That's all I wrote, and now my half of the Nanjing Journal is complete. Inside, it contains some fascinating insights onto the city of Nanjing, but most important, it holds a galvanizing vision for the future of this channel. While from the start, this has been a travel channel focused on exploring the different beautiful cities and towns here in China. And while I still plan to visit and capture all the most amazing places in this country, that's just the foundation for this journey. I want you to imagine a YouTube that holds the power to bring the world to your doorstep, to ignite the spark within and encourage and empower you to live your best life. Each video, a powerful dose of positive energy that serves as a catalyst for personal growth and transformation. It's like an immunity boost 
for your soul. But I can't go about this journey alone. I invite you to join me on this magnificent journey. And first things first, this journal needs your words of inspiration. I'm leaving it here in Nanjing and I invite anyone and everyone to come take a look at it and share your thoughts and reflections to fill its empty pages. This chronicle will be passed down for generations to come as yet another artifact of the city of Nanjing. I'm really excited that you get to be a part of it. And with that, I bid you see you for our next great China adventure.